Just wondering if you think the 4050 will be released in 2023 as we are basically four months in. Also, with the price hikes that have been happening for 4,000, do you think there will be any RTX, say, 4030 or 4040 or maybe GTX cards uh, below 4050 as it could be anywhere from $300 to $450, which is damn expensive for entry level? <laughs> yeah, welcome to the new entry level, yeah. I guess. Uh, so do I think a 4050 will be released this year? Yes, I think so. Probably, maybe, yeah. could be. I, I, have we ever heard any rumors or leaks about that particular product? Well, the die exists. Mm -hmm. It's currently being manufactured. It is used for laptops. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's not like they're having to make the die sure. out of nowhere. It does exist. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think the we've seen the release cycle for mid-range cards get longer and longer as companies are trying their absolute hardest to get people to buy products like the RTX 4080 while they sit on shelves and yeah, that strategy or, not works. Or so. buy up existing inventory of yeah exactly inventory that's, of previous generation products that's so factor. okay let's say yeah okay it's going to arrive uh and yeah it's going to be expensive like it's going to be not a compelling product but that's the way things are headed like i mean i can't see the rtx 4060 being a great product to be perfectly honest no um purely because it's probably going to have eight gigabytes of vram and you know we've seen eight gig of vram will be four hundred dollars it'll be mediocre giving you 10% more performance than the previous generation or something. And yep. yeah, so, yeah, that's very, mid range very, now. Yeah. And again, this, it's lovely to blame NVIDIA for, you know, making crappy entry level cards, but there's no competition. Yeah. Where's AMD? No com and like part of the issue with AMD's GPUs again, last generation was like, again, your the, R the RX 6600 came out and it ended up being a very compelling product it is great value. If you're buying in the sort of 200 to $300 range, but at the time when it came out, it was terribly overpriced and was not very good. And this is another... 7900 XT. Another blunder from AMD of setting the expectations wrong so that everyone gets this idea of like, yeah, okay, okay, you know, you, you've got the consumer sitting there. They're wanting to see what the latest, you know, next-gen entry-level cards are doing. And they're like, oh, I'm super excited. They watch the review. It's like, oh, that's pretty mediocre. And they're just like, all right, I'll forget that mm. in my mind. I'm not going to look at that in the future. Don't care. It's out of my mind now. All the reviews are mediocre. Don't care. And they, you know, they buy something else or don't look at the price in the future because the expectation's been set. Mm. It's been set as being bad, and it takes a lot to reverse that. So if we want to see these products like the 4050 not being a terrible $350 GPU offering you nothing, AMD needs to come out and make their card not terribly priced yeah, at launch. and the worst part is as well, it's so frustrating. It's not that they're doing it six months down the track, 12 months down the track. like It's like straight away. <laughs> well, I think the RX 6600, admittedly, there was the whole cryptocurrency thing, which it's hard to blame mm. NVIDIA for that. But that it was, as soon as that was over, it was slashed. It, yeah, months the down the track. The 3050 is still not really at $250. That's right. So, so it just shows yeah, their power there. That's right. So, but there's no cryptocurrency boom to sort of use as the scapegoat there. Why Why was the 7700 XT released at... <laughs> 900 bucks, such an imbalance. Oh my God. Why was that ever a thing? It should have never been a thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, so. no, it's no good. And it's like, yeah, okay, over time, AMD fixes these things, they lower prices. And I know you said in a video recently that they should have official price cuts, which, yep. which I agree with. Mm -hmm. um, or was that a, a podcast? Can't remember. You said it recently. I said some, it. Some for, some, it's a thing some I form, said. But, you know, the. Marketing is clearly very important with these products, and NVIDIA does a very good job of this. They're, they're all over it, mm -hmm. all over the marketing. They've got great marketing, and AMD seems to, you know, there's obvious ways where they could improve their market share, and it just seems like, you know, I don't know whether you'd agree with this, but it almost seems like they just don't care. Like, they, they genuinely don't care about having good GPU market share. Well, I mean... I don't know what other explanation there is for that. It's yeah. almost like they're, whenever they've got an opportunity to do something, it, it seems, again, we have limited insight. I'm sure the people running the company <laughs> have a better understanding yeah. of the industry than we do, you would hope. Yeah. But you just they just seem to do the opposite of what they should be doing. And then when it's all played out, you think, okay, and you got to, you can, the dust settles and you can analyze it, but you're like, yeah, I still don't understand why they did what they did. Yeah. So, bit puzzling there, but yeah, they've obviously had an opportunity here, regardless of really where mm -hmm. the performance came out, to give NVIDIA a good kick and win back yeah. some market share. And they're like, nah, 
Like yeah, things like sixty five hundred XT comes out for two hundred dollars, being just a terrible product. It's like they they just shoot themselves in the foot with things like that. It's mm. like maybe just don't release that product or make it cheaper or something. You know, yeah, I I would I would say that you know it's going to be much more difficult to get a good value two hundred dollar GPU like the RX five eighty GTX ten sixty mm. era. I think those days are pretty much gone. Mm-hmm. But then you think about. The 20 series was only a few years ago, and they released Nvidia released the GTX 16 series with yeah, the 1650 wasn't amazing, but it was 150 dollars. 1650 Super was a lot better. So yeah, they at least had something for 150 dollars. Mm. The last two generations have not had a card even close to that price. Um, mm-hmm. With the RTX 3050 being effectively 300 dollars plus throughout its entire lifespan. So there's clearly an opportunity here to make some sort of it doesn't have to be a great product, but it just at least has to be good or average at around two hundred dollars. Offering, yeah, admittedly, not it won't be very impressive in terms of performance. It won't offer heaps of VRAM, but it can't make obvious mistakes like having no PCIe bus <laughs> and having two display connectors and no hardware encoding. No hardware encoding. You know, it's those obvious things like, yeah, th- these are just areas that AMD could, you know provide competition. Intel, I think, with a, if Intel does come around to having a, a next generation, I think their drivers will hopefully have improved to the point where they can start offering much better experiences because you'd hope that the day one reviews of a future Intel Arc GPU wouldn't be talking about, hey, you know, half the games don't work and no. performance in CS goes horrible and the drivers crash. It'll be more, let's, let's genuinely just look at performance. Let's see mm-hmm. how competitive it is. Yep. And maybe they have an angle there. So... It all comes down to competition. And with something like the 4050, we need a lot of it. Mm.